Hey everyone, Nick Belezzo, hopeless, so very hopeless guitar enthusiast with you once again. And I'm coming to you from my very new home. I actually bought a home I closed the day before New Year's Eve. So the last few uh, months, in fact the last year has been pretty crazy. Uh, if you've been watching some of my videos and reviews, uh, you notice that I don't do a lot of them. It's very difficult for me to turn around stuff very uh, quickly. I've been shopping for a home for the last year. Finally found one uh, that I uh, got an offer accepted and everything went through. It, the housing market in the Chicagoland area has just been crazy. Even in the winter it's still nuts right now. So it's been tough for me to consistently make videos and turn stuff out because I'm constantly moving. I had storage units and it's just been it's just been nuts. So I'm very excited now that I have my own place and it's got everything that I'm looking for. Now I'll be able to shoot videos, build guitars, spray lacquer, have a workshop set up, get uh, a drum set uh, going again, which I've been missing out for years, uh, and have a recording studio and really do all the things that I've been wanting to do for. 10, 15 years that I haven't been able to do. So this means that if you enjoy what I'm doing, I'm gonna be able to make more videos and pump out content more consistently. So that being said, I'll put a tour of the house at the end of the video if you're interested. If not, you can just cut out. But I had a few requests for an updated guitar collection. So I figured I'll do one really quick. I'll try to turn this out really quickly. Some of these guitars I'm gonna sell or maybe trade for studio gear. So uh, let's get to it. First of all, I got this from my buddy Adam. It's a younger brother to my uh, longtime friend uh, John Traver. And this is uh, nothing special. Hard SKB hard shell case with a um, Squire jazz bass. So. It was just sitting. He wasn't doing anything with it. Uh, it was sitting in his parents' house. The, they um, were going to move, and um, he's like, 50 bucks, it's yours. I said, okay, 50 bucks, sure. So thanks, Adam. It's always nice having a bass around. And uh, it, it really is. It's a Korean made. It's, I think it's like a late 90s. And just cool to have a jazz bass around, even if, uh, if it's a cheapo. So, in my end of my first collection video, I shared with you my <laughs> uh, Ibanez. This is my first electric guitar, and it's still in the same state. I thought as a joke, it's totally not worth it uh, to restore this guitar. I got this in, I think, 95. Uh, it was black, and it's like 20 plies. <laughs> So, note to self, I know everyone wants to refinish guitars. Don't refinish a cheap guitar, especially with like a brown walnut stain. It will look terrible. Here's another example of that. So, Adam, when I got that bass, he also said, this is sitting in the attic. This was my second guitar ever. It's an Epiphone Les Paul Jr. It was sunburst. And I sold it to my buddy John for like 75 bucks, and he uh, sanded it down, and it's been sitting in an attic. It's it's unplayable. But he had some really nice parts. I actually did some work for him. In exchange, he let me have some gear for free. So there was actually a, a Seymour Drunken uh, JB, and then a P94 humbucker size um, P90, and some hardware. So I actually got some really decent parts out of it. But it just God, this thing is so ugly. So it's kind of funny that that resurfaced. So thanks, Adam, and thanks, John. So there's a video I have posted of me restoring a Mexican Standard Strat, a 94 Mexican Standard Strat. And this is it. And this guitar was smashed at Superior Street Studios in Chicago at uh, my... Uh, friend's uh, band's rehearsal studio where their, their band plays at and some guy was like, hey, there's a Strat in the dumpster here and does anyone want it? And so um, my buddy grabbed it and gave it to me and I put, I don't know, several hundreds of dollars worth of time and labor and parts in this. It's not worth anything, but I did a stainless steel refret. Uh, I'll put a link below to the video so you can check it out. I've changed some parts out on it and then, you know, refretted it, put new tuners on it, new bone nut, donor body from like a quartz Strat. With all the guitars in the world and all the garbage in the world, 
let's try to let's let's try to stop doing the smashing everything and throwing everything away. Let's salvage as much as possible. So this is cool because I can bring this and kind of not worry about it, bring it out to a gig or leave it at someone's house or something like that and just have it on hand. Okay, so speaking of more garbage guitars, here's my, this is not my dumpster guitar, this is kind of just a garbage uh, Strat copy that's a guitar fetish, GFS um, kit. And this was the very first guitar that I got nitro lacquer cans that I practice uh, with shellac. And it's uh, shellac and nitro on the body. I have different, if you can see here, it was shoreline gold on the top. And then uh, it was capri orange with a matching headstock. And then I got fiesta red, shell pink, seafoam green. The neck is not sealed properly. It looks like garbage. I did a, my first stainless steel fret job. I uh, was on here and I have just some locking tuners and then uh, I'll put a picture of the headstock here and you can see uh, the sort of humor. And it's just wires with uh, electrical caps and all this stuff. And this is a GFS uh, EVH humbucking pickup and it actually, this, this guitar sounds great. It's that, I don't know how to pronounce the wood. If someone could write it out phonetically in the comments, that Polonia, Polonia wood. I think it grows in China. It's super light. It's super soft. Uh, but despite how horrible this guitar looks, it actually plays and sounds great. I played a full preset gig with just this guitar, and it was it was fine. I have a, a note. I played this at a farewell gig to my my buddy Ryan Mummy, who's moving to Connecticut, and uh, I wrote on here, "Friends don't let friends move to Connecticut." Um, Bonus points if you know what that's referencing right there. What other crap do I have? Okay, so if you can tell, so far, these are the cheapos. You saw this one before. I got this for free, also for my buddy Ryan, actually his girlfriend. I actually was going to give this to my boss's nephew as like a, a gift, because uh, I didn't pay anything for it, but then... They found out he already had a bass, so don't worry about it, which is great because I actually really like, I like this better than the, the jazz bass. So, for free, it's cool to just have a bass. I'm not really a bass player, so I like having that around. This one I've been working on and off for years now. It's a build. It's an S-type build. S-type. So you might look at this and say that this is some kind of Mary Kay, which is kind of what this is. This was a uh, uh, this is an all parts licensed by Fender replacement Strat neck, and this is a Music Craft three piece extra light uh, ash body. And what I did is I practiced a, a finishing type called Ceruse. Now, I think that's how it's pronounced. Now, Ceruse is basically known as dog hair or silver fox, but what I did is I flipped it and I took a whitewash and filled it with a ebony filler. Um, and then I did a little bit of a white overcoat, um, transparent white, and clear coated it. It's all nitro. Gold, Evo Gold Jeskar fret wire. These pickups were wound from Dogtown Custom, I think it's called. This, this is NOS 56 wire. Uh, brass, GFS bridge, all gold hardware, so it's kind of got a Mary Kay thing going on, V-shaped neck. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video uh, series on this build and a final demo. I might switch some parts around on this thing, uh, but it's one of the lightest. This thing weighs like six pounds. It it's, feels like a hollow body. Um, really bright, really snappy, and um, a lot of fun. Didn't come out perfect, but at least I practiced this finishing technique, so I'll get better and better at it. All right, now also on to builds. So a couple of years ago, I was going through a transition. Um, I quit my main job. I was working odd jobs. I, I moved to a friend's house. It was it was a crazy time, and I end up saying I just got to build this. I built this at my dad's house in my spare time as an afterthought, but this is actually. Um, an E-type, an E-type um, guitar, and again, this was Music Craft part, well, this is a WD 
licensed by Fender replacement Telecaster neck, and it's um, made of uh, Wenge, which is an African wood. It's a species of um, rosewood. It's in the same family, but it is not rosewood. Um, and that looked really cool. It's a boat. It's like an inch thick the whole way down. Uh, and then this wood is also that pol polonia wood or whatever. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Extremely light guitar. Extremely light. In fact, the neck is probably as heavy as the body. And I had a, a mishmash of parts here, just a basic tele setup. I, I did it like uh, an Esquire where I do have that woof tone in the neck and then the bridge with the volume and the tone and then this cuts the tone out and has just the volume. This is a Lindy Freeland P90 pickup in a, in a tele bridge um, type setup. It's got a uh, three saddle compensated brass bridge with the cutaways and the notches so you don't scrape yourself when you're playing. Three ply pick guard and I did like this kind of honey blonde opaque or transparent look so it's kind of like those late 60s blondes that kind of go creamy. That's kind of what I was going for. Didn't really work out but this guitar sounds plays amazing uh, super even lighter than that S-type that I showed you, this thing is extremely light, five and a half pounds, something like that. Uh, doesn't even feel like it's on my shoulder. And it's getting beat up, so this wood is really soft. So uh, if you hit it, dent it, it, it chips and, and it doesn't, it's not very durable. But I love it. This is my number one. This is my main guitar now. Um, was a fluke, just did it as an afterthought and it came out great. So I'm going to probably do a video on this as well. Now on to the Gibsons. You notice I don't have an acoustic. I don't have any acoustics. I don't have any 12 strings. Uh, I'd like a classical. I don't have any of that. So I have to get that still. So let's go with... Okay. If you watch my channel, you've all seen this one. I still have it. <laughs> and I haven't done anything to it. And I was getting ready to ship it. So all these guitars were actually ready to ship, and I unpacked them again. And this is my 2018 Gibson Explorer, unmodified. <laughs> so I won't go into depth here because I have two videos on here of the demo and review you can check out. And I have some of my thoughts about owning this for a year. But, you know, just to reiterate, uh, like I was saying in my other video, I since buying this guitar, I've become obsessed with explorers. I absolutely love them. I'm doing tons of research. I'm contacting people. I'm reaching out. I want to actually write a book about the explorer, um, the original Karinas. And uh, one came out a couple years ago and um, I give the guy kudos for, for writing it, but there's a lot of uh, misinformation. Uh, he even has fakes in there. There are known fakes that are labeled as reels and I want I want to kind of try to set the story. You can't set the story straight on the Karina Gibsons. You can't. It's, it's great folklore. So I uh, don't know what I'm going to do with this one. If I'm still going to mod it or sell it or keep it, we'll see. Now here's a guitar uh, that I'm going to be doing a demo and review that I've been working on since July. <laughs> Shows you how quickly I work. So this is a Gibson Memphis 2018 ES330 in what they call a sunset burst. It's pretty beautiful. Now the last time I checked, uh, about a month ago, uh, Gibson still does not have the ES330 uh, in their product line. I know I think high-end shops have been getting like special custom finishes. They've still been making them. Uh, but this one is a Memphis, so one of the last uh, years for the Memphis production, as you probably know, they closed down the Memphis plant. They're all being made in Nashville. This one's no longer available as a standard model. So this is a standard model ES330. It's not a reissue, so but if you wanted to try to uh, peg a year on it that it represents, it's kind of like a late era 62 transitional model. So you got your reflector knobs, uh, black plastic still on the uh, pickups, and then you have uh, the black perloid inlays, which came like late 62, early 63. Cream binding, beautiful guitar. What I really, really love is it's not the slim taper neck, it's like a late 50s, a beefier, chunky, chunkier neck, and um, fully hollow body. For years, sleeper guitars 
not a lot of value. I've seen the value of these, uh, the vintage ones go up um, quite a bit in the last few years and there's a lot of reissues and like VOS and custom shop versions coming out of this guitar. So great guitar, stay tuned for a demo of this one. Another guitar I love, another Gibson that I fell in love with an original 64 version of this that um, I had on loan. So this is a 2018 limited edition Gibson SG Junior. And this particular model, uh, I'm trying to find out, I've sent Gibson in a couple emails and I haven't gotten a, resp a reply back, which I'll have to say, Gibson's usually pretty good at replying emails. I've always had great luck with them and they've always answered even my nerdy questions, but the last uh, few emails I've sent, they, they haven't replied. So. Um, I was asking uh, how many of these were made. Some people say 500. All it is is basically the current SG Junior, but um, there might be a difference in the frets. But basically, you've got this old like script logo, the pre CMI 47 and earlier cursive logo, and it has a uh, only a Gibson is good enough badge, uh, which is funny. My bro buddy Brian pointed out right where the headstock usually breaks. But this one has an unbelievable. Uh, two-piece flame uh, mahogany top. I mean, there's so much figure. Well, not flame, but there's tons of deep figuring in the in the mahogany. It just looks so cool. This thing is bare bones, sort of a step up from the Melody Maker. You know, wrap around bridge, no intonation. It is what it is. Volume tone, just ready to rock. These things sound great. Love the 64s. Uh, one of these days I'll get a 64 with a beefier neck profile. This is Slim Taper. Now they're doing this in regular production with the regular um, logo, the CMI logo. And um, I, these things are just just fun. They're just fun rocker, rocker guitars. Um, so had to grab one of these when I saw it. Also, we'll be eventually doing a demo on this. So stay tuned for that as well when I get to it. So here's one that's kind of fun. Also I'll have a little quick demo on this guitar. This was purchased in 2008 or early 2009 by a good friend of mine, Steve Baxter, who played bass in my band for years. This is a Gibson Guitar of the Month for March 2008. It's a limited edition Flying V, 50th anniversary. If I can get that thing out of it. Pretty unusual as far as V's go. Double A matched maple top. It's not a veneer, it's like a half inch thick. Special neck profile, special logo that they found, and I guess in um, Ted McCarty's uh, personal stuff, a logo that wasn't used. It's got the Steinberger gearless tuners, Super 400 Mother of Pearl inway, inlay, real ebony fretboard, gold fret wire, gold plated parts, classic 57s, um, just a limited edition of a thousand. This is number 795. I bought this from my buddy Steve and I bought another guitar from him and uh, I've actually fallen in love with this thing. It's totally turned my opinion on V's. So bo both Explorers and V's I love now and I never was into those guitars. So I'm going to do another demo review on this one as well. This one might be get, getting traded uh, after I make this video. Uh, my buddy Brian loves it and he has a bunch of studio gear that I um, that I need, so I might trade it, but uh, also it's got these crazy bevels on the bottom, you can see right here. So just an extremely unique guitar. They made an um, Explorer version of this later in that year, another thousand which I would love to own. So if you look at my old estate sale video, there is a bunch of guitars that I sold and now that I'm back in a place I can make music and kind of enjoy myself again. Uh, this one I sold to my buddy Steve, and uh, I bought this and the V back from him. So this is just my 2001 Les Paul Classic Plain Top. I absolutely love this Les Paul. This is a pick of the litter. Comes from uh, an area or an era of standard production Gibsons, where they're still doing a lot of historic spec stuff, Clusons, ABR. Um, wire bridge. I put on reflector knobs so it kind of looks like um, there's no cherry in it but it looks like a 60. Honey burst that's faded a weird hue. Put a Seymour Duncan Antiquity 2 in the bridge. 
some kind of, uh, maybe a classic 57, I'm not sure, a PAF replica in the neck. I love it. It's beat the crap. There's huge chunks taken out of it. Lightweight, eight and a half pounds. Everyone who sees this one, not to brag, but it's one of those things that every time I pull this Les Paul out, everyone who's, you know, a guitarist is like, what Les Paul is that? So, I love this thing. My buddy Steve wants to buy it back. <laughs> so, we'll see what happens with this house and my finances. So, that's it for guitars. Uh, I have my Deluxe Reverb 68 Custom Silver Face Reissue, the Drip Edge. Uh, I sold this one at my estate sale. But I bought it back. Again, my buddy Steve bought this one too. This is my main amp, just your standard reverb with a few little uh, different ticks to it. Uh, but I love it because uh, it's an all around, just classic amp. So it's good for demos, it's good for bringing the gigs. I still would like something less power. This is 22 watts, 6L6. I like less power than this. Uh, but this one all around, if, if you want to have one amp, I would highly suggest a reverb or a reverb type amp. I do have a Marshall 212 model, uh, I think of 1939, I want to say it is. It's a JCM 800 series particle board amp. Got it free from my buddy John Schreiber. Thank you. I did some work on it. He let me keep it. One of the speakers are blown. I'll probably replace the speakers, uh, upgrade it, but price was right. So it's cool to just have a cab in case I do have something where I want to to plug uh, head into it. And then I did buy one gift, not that I need any gifts, uh, for my ha housewarming for my, to myself, is I got a Valve Tech Hey C30 112 combo amp. Um, Valve Tech was a company um, by a guy named Rob Pierce who made amps one by one by hand in Indiana. I've owned a VAC 2550 that was in Checkerbird Tolex. Should have never got rid of that amp. Loved it. I've always wanted another VAC, uh, and I wanted the Hey C30, which obviously it's an AC30 clone. So I grabbed this from Dave's Guitar in La Crosse. They shipped it to me, made me a deal on it. Admittedly, does not sound great right now, but I think it's the power tubes. Uh, it's a Class A amp with three or four EL84s. Class A is running hot all the time. Those tubes burn up really quickly. I think once I replace all the tubes, especially the power tubes, it's going to sound great. But either way, I'll get it going. So really excited. It's got a Celestion green back, uh, 112. Once I get this going, I'll have my 606 type amp, and then I'll have my AC30 type amps uh, to do demos with. And it made me realize that a lot of the sound, in fact, most of your sound is your guitar amp. Your guitar amp is an instrument. So I think moving forward, as much as I love guitars, even if you have a really nice guitar, if you have a shitty amp, it doesn't matter. So I think I'm going to get into more amp reviews. I want to buy and sell boutique amps or just different amp models of all different price ranges. I think I'm going to move this channel, not completely towards it, but a lot more to amplifiers because I think that is something that would be really fun to do. So thank you very much for sticking with me, for hanging in there. I'm going to start putting these videos out more consistently. Let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. I'm going to show a little tour of the house at the end just so you can see what I'm up to. Uh, but thank you very much. Click like, subscribe, yada, 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 all that stuff. But I hope to see you very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Okay, everyone, so this is just a quick tour. I'm shooting this on my iPhone, so the quality isn't the greatest. But start in the uh, front room, the family room. And I finally got my TV <laughs> out of storage. I uh, got my vinyl out of storage and got... Finally, a little bit of a temporary, everything's temporary, so please excuse the mess right now. It looks it looks like hell, I got crap all over the place, but uh, I got these chairs for free, I got that recliner for free, got those end tables, we're actually in a pretty nice home, made in Italy, dinner's table set, that was awesome, my realtor hooked me up with that. And here's the kitchen, eating space. I don't like the lights, so I'm gonna replace the lights. Uh, kitchen is pretty small. But it's usually just me, so not a big deal. Um, and this whole house was remodeled. It was built in 63, so excuse the mess again. And then there was a little bit of a slab family room or living room addition in the back here, which is awesome. And again, it's just basically all my stuff. I've been unpacking and sorting, and so it looks like hell, but it's cool. I don't know what I'm going to do with this room yet. The, there's really no lighting in here, but I'm really excited because I have basically two living rooms and, and instead of just having like a thousand square foot, I got a little extra space. So 
Here's one of the great parts of this is right now I have a tandem four car garage. Now there used to be uh, a wall right here that was taken down by someone. I'm going to put the wall back up. So I'll still have a two car garage. And I'll try eventually I'll probably finish this off a little bit nicer, put some drywall up. I still have this is obviously an addition, an old addition to the house. Probably didn't have um it was built in 63, so probably when they built it in 63 it didn't have this, but this looks like it was put up not too long after. Um but this back room is gonna be um heated workshop, and I might even be able to put some kind of spray booth in here which is something that I've dreamed about for maybe almost 10 years now so I'm excited about that so that's attached to the back room I'll just show you the other rooms really quick this bathroom remodeled bathroom this room I'm trying to keep as empty as possible for the time being I have a tendency to load up everywhere but this might become like a little bit of a study or a meditation room put some plants in here and uh maybe like a fountain and stuff like that i'm thinking about putting my whole music collection on this wall like all my vinyl and cds probably would fill it up but still not 100 percent sure what i'm going to do and here's my bedroom i got one of those new casper beds and just some cheap Ikea furniture just for the time being. But it is pretty comfortable. And then this is kind of just like a makeshift office. And again, I'm still unpacking, sorting things out, getting paperwork done. And um, this is kind of a rickety amp stack. So there's my new toy that I bought that I'll probably be doing a demo on very shortly. Um, I'll be talking about more of this. I kind of just have temporary blackout curtains. Again, it's very cheap rugs, just something to get me going. Nothing permanent right now. But here's the part of the house that, of course, gets any guy excited. Again, excuse the state of things right now. It's kind of nasty. It's just an unfinished basement, but... It's a full unfinished basement, the size of the house, so I think it's roughly a thousand square feet. Maybe a little under it, but still it's the full slab foundation of the house. And this is something I've been waiting for for years. And now I get to, uh, I'm gonna put up, you know, be able to set up drums. I'm gonna get a little recording studio. I'm gonna build some ISO booths down here. And also probably have a little place for video studio for the green screen and shooting videos. Maybe a little workout area because that's something I really, really need to do right now. And, uh, but what's cool, I don't know if you can see this. I'll have to take other videos of it. There's, there's writing in the wall. I'll shoot some other videos with my other camera. There's a bunch of, there's like a journal in the rafters. Somebody here wrote a bunch of dates, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And then that's almost all of my guitar set up and parts and necks and bodies. That's like half of it. <laughs> and I just had to have a bunch of electrical work done. There's some, you know, lighting's not, it's nothing special. It's just a, you know, to you watching, it's probably just a boring old unfinished basement. But to me, this is like heaven. So not only do I have the two living rooms where I can do regular people stuff like normals, <laughs> uh, like have people over and entertain have uh, you know game days game nights people over to for barbecues and stuff uh, I still have room to do all the other things that I like to do and I love this this has probably been here since 63 and there's all a bunch of goodies that I'll show so I'm really excited to start I have to actually that's an old concrete uh, Laundry sink, I gotta bust it up. I'll probably do that later today. And I got a washer coming. The plumber's coming next weekend to finish this up. I had electrical guys do a bunch of work. So I'm really excited. I'll have a place to play music, to have friends over. Uh yeah, play not only play me play my music, which I I miss, but also jam and record and stuff like that. So 
thanks for thanks for looking around.